Previously on the Pokemon Files. Something's not right here. Pikachu. Oh no. A Pikachu? Not here. This is nonsense. Pikachu. But that. That is something I will almost certainly never be able to live with. Oh, crap. This time on The Pokemon Files. Those little unknown mucks! Who just brings someone's greatest enemy into their own home? Seriously, those unknown have no respect. God, this is just great. Just great. Seriously, I do my best to try and get rid of this thing, now it's trying to ram down my door. What am I supposed to do now? I don't even have a lunar wing. Wait a second. Why would the unknown do this? What does it have to do with the vision? Is this supposed to help me or something? Order broken. Nightmares had. A war between them the fabrics of the universe. Only the strongest heart can end the fight. Order can only be sought by he who is true. That's it! I can't believe I didn't see it before. The Lunar Wing is only gifted to the strongest of Pokemon trainers. Oh wait, I'm not a trainer. Or strong, by any sense of the word. But I have to figure out some way. I have to figure out what it means to be a strong Pokemon trainer, or something like that. What even is a strong Pokemon trainer? Is this someone with all level 100 Pokémon? Do they have Pokémon with all maxed IVs? Or is it just someone who's passionate about the creatures millions of people have come to know and love? I'm John Mahogany, and today, let's learn a little bit about Pokémon Trainers. A Pokémon Trainer is someone within the Pokémon world who catches, raises, and trains Pokémon either for companionship or for competing in battles. Trainers often set off from their homes at around the age of 10 after receiving a Pokemon, be it a starter from a professor, or a gift from their parents, or whomever else. Trainers are sorted into various different classes that may determine the type of Pokemon they will use or what location they can be found. Hikers, for example, prefer rock and ground types and can be found along mountain ranges. I personally am a fan of the dark type. But I don't think he cares about that. There is an interesting hierarchy among Pokémon trainers, beginning with basic trainers, then gym leaders, elite four members, then the champion, and lastly, a greater sect of trainers known as the Battle Frontier Brains. Usually, Pokémon trainers go on a journey to earn badges and compete against the elite four. However, some may take different paths, such as competing in contests or trying to fill up the Pokédex. Either way, each one has something in common. They each must possess a powerful bond with their Pokémon in order to achieve their goals. Hmm. This bond may just be what gets a trainer a lunar wing, but why? No matter what kind of trainer you are, at any time you are only allowed to possess up to six Pokémon, no exceptions. So trainers must choose wisely what kinds of Pokémon they want on their teams. Some trainers only pick the strongest for means of competitive battling, making their Pokémon stronger via IV training. These trainers may also breed Pokémon so that they are born with certain stats and abilities that will best suit them in battle. 
These trainers are rather intense about the battle and are usually the kind to use status moves rather than just rushing and head on with brute force. Other trainers may seek out the cutest or most beautiful Pokemon in order to win a contest, even if they aren't the greatest in battle. Some trainers also have fondness for the unique colorings of the rare or shiny Pokemon and may go on extensive hunts for these rare gems. Then there's the Nuzlockers, or whatever type of challenge they like to do. These are the trainers who assign a challenge-based set of rules to their journeys. The Nuzlocke is the most popular of these challenges. In this challenge, a Pokemon trainer may only catch the first Pokemon they find on a route, and if a Pokemon faints, they are considered deceased. This can be tough on the trainer if they lose a Pokemon they've grown fond of, or one that was their strongest. However, this forces the trainer to hone their skills precisely so that they are less likely to lose another Pokemon. I would suck at a Nuzlocke. Seriously, if you've ever seen me play a Pokemon game, you'd think it was my first time, because those things would be fainting all the time. Lastly, there's the most common kind of trainer, which is probably the kind you are. This kind of trainer is the one that just uses their favorite Pokemon, regardless of typing or stats. These kinds come in all shapes and sizes. I mean, have you seen me? I'm a shape, alright. These trainers don't need to be passionate about the battle, because no matter what, they'll have fun. I'm not saying other trainers wouldn't, but they just aren't as serious about it. In the heat of the battle, their heads are cool, recollecting the lessons they've learned from their losses and their wins. Every trainer wants to be the best, no matter how they play the game, but to get there, they have to work with their Pokemon, not simply command them like tools, which unfortunately is something not everyone gets. Where there is good, there must be evil, even in the world of Pokémon. All over the world, in every region, there has been spawned a group of people hellbent on using Pokémon as tools to build up their sinister plans. Some of these groups don't care about Pokémon, others care too much, but in the end, all they do is hurt others and Pokémon alike. Each one of these groups hold the title of Team with their own designated name. The most notable teams are Team Rocket, Team Aqua, Team Magma, Team Galactic, Team Plasma, and Team Flare. These groups all carry different visions for the world and Pokemon, but cannot achieve their goals by moral means. Except for Team Rocket. They're just assholes. Team Rocket is more of a gang than a team. They capture rare, powerful Pokemon for the purposes of selling them for profit, and exploit them for money. They are one of two villainous teams to have caused the death of a Pokemon, labeling them one of the most evil of the teams. They work very outwardly, making themselves well known amongst the regions they attempt to control, being Kanto, Johto, and the Sevi Islands. Team Rocket aims to conquer the world using powerful Pokémon, and they were led by Giovanni until his disappearance. Next up are Team Magma and Team Aqua, two villainous groups who aim to conquer the Hoenn region while rivaling one another. In the original Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, Team Magma and Aqua worked much the same, an evil and intelligent organization that aimed to expand the land or raise the seas respectively. However, in Oras, they're more fleshed out, somewhat literally. Team Magma, led by Maxi, works more as an organization with the goal of using the powers of Primal Groudon to expand the land. Now, they aren't doing this for completely selfish reasons. They want to do this so that human civilization can grow and expand. Then there's Team Aqua, a very interesting group that works more like a gang of pirates than an organization. Led by Archie, they plan to use the powers of Primal Kyogre to expand the sea so that more water Pokemon could thrive. Aw, how nice, especially considering how the most common type is the water type. Also, the internet kind of blew up over Archie's upgrade design, and well, while he is damn fine, I prefer the tall, mysterious billionaire Frenchman, but we'll talk about him later. In the Sinner region, there is a group known as Team Galactic. This group is rather incompetent outside the inner circle of the commanders and the leader. Their leader is Cyrus, a grade-A sociopath who plans to destroy the universe and recreate it without being. He is a selfish sort, not caring about his commanders, grunts, or even his Pokémon. He only wants to rule like a god in a world where no one could fight back, as he would also erase Pokémon from existence as well. He would do this by summoning the Pokémon of time and space, Dialga and Palkia. However, he was thwarted by the Pokémon Giratina and dragged into the distortion world, where he had never returned. How on earth did he get that Crobat? Like, seriously, do you know how Crobat evolves? Does Cyrus seem like a person who could do that? No, he doesn't. Next up is probably the most organized and thought-provoking of the teams, Team Plasma. Team Plasma and Neo Team Plasma are the villainous teams associated with the New Nova region. They were led by N and Getsus. Their plan? To liberate Pokémon from people. You see, their gospel was that humans, no matter how much they said they loved Pokémon, were using them as slaves. For the first time in a Pokemon game, they actually made trainers question their escapades with Pokemon. Now, while their king N believed in Team Plasma's plans, Getsus really set this up as a facade. For he aimed to use the legendary dragon Pokemon, Zekrom and Reshiram, to conquer Unova. However, he needed them to be awakened by the two heroes, one being his son N, and the other, the player. 
When his plans failed, Getus succumbed to his own insanity and disowned his son, going off to form Neo Team Plasma. Neo Team Plasma's goal was straightforward conquer Unova with the freezing power of Kira. Okay, so everyone's like, oh, Getus is the most evil villain because he tries to kill the player. No, actually. He tries to freeze the player. He even says it in his dialogue. But I can see where they're coming from. He is the first villain, or any character for that matter, to try to physically harm the player. Lastly is the recent and disappointing Team Flare. This stylish group was based in Kalos and was led by Lissandre and his scientists. Shut up! I can already hear you mocking my pronunciation, just don't. Team Flare aimed for a more beautiful world. What that means isn't exactly clear, but it is implied that it is really a world without anybody who isn't Team Flare. Even though a good portion of Team Flare is in the group so they don't get blasted by a giant death flower. Yes, you heard me right, giant death flower. Lissandre planned to use the life force of Pokemon, specifically Xerneas and Eveltal, to raise a great weapon to obliterate all life on Kalos. Kind of like a restart button. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Team Plasma, mostly because of X and Y's poor writing, but I do think if they had better storytelling, Team Flare could have been one of the best evil teams, second to Plasma. My reasoning is based off of one scene in X and Y alone. When you confront Lissandre about his actions in the Team Flare Secret HQ, your rival questions if he even cares about the Pokemon lives that will be lost in the firing of the weapon. Then, Lissandre sheds a single tear. It shows that he is unlike the other team leaders. He's actually compassionate and cares about Pokemon, and is aware of the consequences of his actions. But he cares more about recreating the world so that it can be better, and is willing to make sacrifices. So what have we learned about Pokemon trainers after analyzing the evil teams? We've learned that there are some pretty horrible people in the world. Even in the magical world of Pokemon, there are those who couldn't care less about the ramifications of their actions as long as they achieve their goal. However, this also shows us that, as long as the bonds between trainers and their Pokemon are strong, they can overcome these evils. Throughout this video, I've been constantly mentioning the bonds between a trainer and their Pokemon. But what exactly is this bond, and what does it mean? When the bond between a trainer and their Pokemon is strong, they can do amazing things. When their hearts are one, it is said that a Pokemon starts to look and act like its trainer, even being able to go beyond evolution and achieve something that both the trainer and Pokemon must work to achieve. This is Mega Evolution. Yet some trainers don't achieve this, but that doesn't mean their bond isn't strong. For Mega Evolution is only one sign of a good bond. Max happiness or a full team of level 100s could be other signs, or just the passion a trainer and Pokemon will show when they work perfectly in sync with one another in battle. Being a good trainer isn't determined by badges or how high your caught Pokemon number is. You know a good trainer when they heal their Pokemon as often as they can, when they take every spare second to open up a Mi or Super Training, or take a second to turn around and talk to their Pokemon. A strong bond can be seen when trainer and Pokemon become true partners. And what is a partner? A wise man once said that a partner is someone who helps you improve yourself and someone you've helped grow, without saying a single word. A partner is someone who inspires you to be your very best, like no one ever was. Pokemon trainers are brave, and that's why they're strong. And only the strongest are those willing to do what no one else will, and stand up for what's right. I know now what I must do. You may have me cursed, but you don't have me scared. If you want to get me, come and get me.